and thank you to all of you for being here. I know there are a lot of very cool workshops going on right now and I appreciate that you've chosen to be here with me. Um, so I, I'm an explorer, uh, a photographer. Um, I'm also a social geographer, believe it or not. I have a, a PhD in exploration. Um, I've spent the last couple years of my life uh, exploring spaces around the world that are off limits to us normally. I've been uh, sneaking into abandoned buildings, construction sites, skyscrapers, infrastructural tunnels, and uh, that's the kind of exploration that I want to talk to you about today. And I actually want to start um, by thinking about what exploration means, right? Every couple of years, I see one of these articles. This one is from uh, 2011, 2012, from the BBC. Um, and I find one of these articles that tells us that there's nothing left to explore in the world. Right? That every peak has been climbed, every glacier has been crossed, every desert has been traversed. But if we think about what exploration actually means, broadly conceived, it's, it's about encountering new environments, it's about building new knowledges, and it's about having new experiences. And so I want to try and broaden out our perception of what exploration is. And I want to do that by taking you back to 2008, when I initially moved to London. Uh, when I first moved here, I was, I was very struck by Battersea Power Station as a space, I think, as, as many people are. Uh, it's an iconic building. It's something that we, we all recognize as the central power provider for London from the 1930s to the 1980s, and has been derelict since 1986. Um, and my friends and I were really interested in knowing what was in this building, what was going on inside there. And of course, when you try to get inside there, what you find is that it's, it's surrounded by fences, there are security guards. Uh, we actually sent an email to the property owner and we asked if we could go inside the building and have a look. They told us that would cost us 2,000 pounds a day. Uh, so we decided to take the easier route. We went at two in the morning, we climbed over the fences, <laughs> we snuck past the security guards and we got inside the building. And what we found in there was absolutely incredible. We found these, these original control panels for the power station. And um, as you can see at the end of that photo, one of my friends actually climbed up on top of the control panels. We also found blueprints inside a podium and we rolled out the blueprints to the power station. We ran around in here, you know, flipping the dials and switches, doing all the things that you can't do in a museum. Um, and uh, over the past couple of years, we went back to Battersea again and again to explore this space. Now, if I fast forward to last year, uh, we learned that Battersea Power Station was going to be redeveloped into uh, yet another housing project for wealthy people. Uh, and we decided that we had uh, one more chance to explore this building and to do something that we had never done previously. So um, we brought some ropes with us in a backpack. Uh, and we also brought our cameras, of course, GoPros, our digital SLRs. We strapped ourselves up and we climbed to the top of the chimneys. And we got a vantage point from the top of those chimneys that very few people have ever seen. Now, given that one of these chimneys now has already been deconstructed and they're rebuilding these chimneys, um, you know, we were, we were some of the last people to see this view. And it's also a view that um, very few people in history have seen. So if we think back to that notion of exploration as uh, encountering new environments, building new knowledges, and having new experiences, I'd like to suggest to you that we don't have to go that far to build those knowledges. Battersea Power Station is just around the corner, and it's one of the places that you can explore. Um, now, we had some friends with us who took photos from the opposite chimneys. And if you look closely, you can see us at the very top of that chimney. And I just want to say a word here about technology, right? Because um, as I said, we had cameras with us uh, that enabled us to, to be able to share these stories with you about the explorations that we've undertaken. And we're surrounded here by a bunch of very cool technology, but technology is only as good as what you make it do, right? We've got to put technology to um, interesting uses. And so, you know, the, the things that we have available to us now, drones, GoPro cameras, uh, mirrorless camera systems that are, are becoming smaller and easier to carry, they're enabling us to explore the world in ways that we couldn't, even five years ago, 
right? These technologies are changing rapidly. And what I'd like to suggest to you is that it's important that we deploy these technologies in ways that are challenging. And one of the ways that we can do that is through urban exploration. So urban exploration, broadly conceived, um, is about accessing, researching, scoping, and accessing off-limit spaces. And as I said, this includes abandoned buildings, infrastructural sites, tunnel systems, bunkers, and I'm going to take you to a few more of those places uh, throughout the course of this talk. But before I do, I just want to show you um, what else we've been able to do with technology. Uh, because in 2010, we produced a video called Crack the Surface about some of our explorations. Um, and I'm going to show you five minutes of that video. If you're interested in seeing the rest of it, it's online. You can find it on Vimeo. Just look for Crack the Surface. We've actually got two episodes. But I'm going to show you five minutes of just the first one now. exploring, in my opinion, is exploring unseen spaces, spaces which are not regularly visited by people, spaces that we define as beautiful but other people define as strange and weird places that you wouldn't think of going to. <laughs> We are just going to many different places, whatever we can find, usually it's not so legal and what we're trying to do is to go to places which have a photographic interest. So basically if they look, look nice, it's great. Uh, you know, cranes, rooftops, uh, decaying stuff for those who find it pretty, uh, trains, anything which can look pretty. There's two different types. You've got sort of urban exploration, which is exploring derelict sites, I believe, and then you've got infiltration of live sites. Um, which you tend to kind of get the guys who are more dedicated doing because it's a little bit riskier and can verge on criminal trespass on top of civil trespass. The legality kind of jumps from place to place and from, you know, location to location. So you might get caught one place and the security guard will just tell you to leave. You get caught another place, you end up in jail. There are plenty of places where we've been and we've been caught by the owners of security and it was just fine. We haven't even met the police or anything. You know, this is perfectly fine. There are other places where we've been taken to the police station, we spent the night in there. Still, we don't have any record, we are just fine. So I guess this is okay. Now, I reckon there are probably some places if we had been caught in there, it would have been a little bit worse, but you know, not anything that bad. <laughs> It's an interest in the, the forgotten things, you know, the things that people have, you know, buildings that are going to get demolished or that haven't been demolished simply because people don't have the money to demolish them. It's an interest in infrastructure, you know, basically seeing what the tube tunnels look like from outside a tube train. Uh, it's an interest in seeing where the water goes when it disappears underground. Um, it's an interest in going places people don't go, you know, the old caveman saying is you never know what's around the next bend. I think the interest is the adventure. We're not going just to take photos, we happen to take photos, but really what we want to have is the adrenaline rush and, you know, the feeling that you, you're somewhere that you don't belong to, that you could be caught at any time and just have to run and, you know, it's adventure.
when I was a kid, I was reading all these books about fantasy, about superheroes, people doing stuff which is pretty astounding, and I was not able to do it. In real life, you cannot do any of this stuff. And it was kind of frustrating. And you know, I carried on playing RPGs on the computer, stuff like that, and it's again frustrating. Whenever you leave the computer in real life, you don't have superpowers, you don't have a sword, you cannot do anything. And then I finally realized that all this kind of crap is possible because the kind of stuff we are doing, if you mention it to people who are not into it, they are going to be like, fuck, you can do that. It's not possible. How did you actually do that? <coughs> so if you've ever wanted to have superpowers, there's your ticket. <laughs> so I'll give, you, I'll give you a hot tip. Um, Trespass in England is not a criminal offense. Right? There are certain places you need to be wary of because of specific bylaws, ports, military sites, and railways. Um, you can be arrested uh, for criminal trespass on those spaces, but the rest of the city is fair game. You should explore it, and I am encouraging you to trespass explicitly. That's what I'm saying today. Um, so if you're wondering where you can get started, what kinds of places should you sneak into, abandoned buildings are a great place to start. They're probably the easiest explorations you can do. Um, this photo is from the Excel, uh, Millennium Mills, which is right near the Excel Center. If you hop on the DLR, you can take it um, down to this space. This is currently being redeveloped, like Battersea, into uh, housing. And I'm not sure what the state of this site is at the moment, um, but when I snuck in there a few years ago, I, uh, there were some really beautiful sites to be seen in that space. Um, whatever neighborhood you happen to live in, whatever country you happen to live in, wherever you happen to be, inevitably there will be a derelict space around your house. And uh, explore it with caution and be sensible about it, but definitely go for it. In London, however, there are more spaces you can explore. There are sewer systems that were built 150 years ago. These sewer systems were, uh, were made of 318 million hand-laid bricks. These are, these are really beautiful structures that very few people appreciate. And getting down there, all it requires is buying a manhole key on Amazon and opening it and going. It's there's nothing to it, really. Put on a high-vis vest and a hard hat and go for it. Um, you can also open some manholes and get into the infrastructure of the city. So these cable tunnels are where all of our telecommunications, fiber optics, sometimes gas networks are. Um, and, you know, so if you think about it, when you, when you shoot an email off to someone, it's probably going through these lines and actually seeing the physical infrastructure of the city is, is a very exciting prospect, right? That's, that's building these new knowledges about the city that we wouldn't have otherwise, knowledges that are often off limits to us. Uh, we've also explored, as you saw in the video, abandoned tube stations. There are 14 stations in London that still have ticket offices, platforms, uh, things that you can explore. Uh, again, that word of warning, this is criminal trespass. You will get in trouble if you get caught exploring the tube. Um, but these are, these are exceptional spaces. And, and one of the results of our explorations and our photography and our sharing of these stories is that we're now starting to have conversations about what should happen with these spaces. You know, a lot of these tube stations have been derelict since, since the war. Um, and so and we're now having conversations about some of these spaces that might be turned into heritage sites or other things. Bunkers under the city built during World War II to evacuate people from the tube during airstrikes. These are empty under the city. And of course, there's new construction, right? This is the beauty of exploring cities. They're always changing. There's excavations going on right now for Crossrail, for the new national grid system, which is here, for the super sewer, which um, is going to be under construction for a number of years. So this is stuff that you can explore now. I guess the last thing that I want to say to you before I'm, before I'm done here is that, you know, not everyone, not all of you are going to have an interest in, in climbing a skyscraper and teetering on the edge while you take a photo, and that's totally understandable. But what I want to encourage you to do is to keep exploring, to never stop exploring. And if you feel yourself stopping yourself from exploring, I want you to ask yourself why. Is it something that's within you that maybe you want to challenge? Or is it that you feel that there's someone else stopping you from exploring? And if it's the latter, I would encourage you to push past that. Because exploration is part of human nature. It's something we've always done, right? And the, the moment that we stop exploring our world, including the cities that we live in, is the moment that cities become dead, right? We need to keep 
going back to that, that refrain, right? We need to keep building new experiences, new knowledges, and having new encounters. And if I return to that initial question from the BBC about what's left to explore in the world, my answer is simple, everything. Thanks very much. Um, one question. Where are you planning to explore next? Uh, I'm not sure I can say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that uh, I, was in a, I was in a cable run two days ago, and uh, they had moved the ladder in the cable run, and I, so I had to go down the opposite manhole and sort of swing onto the ladder. And I didn't really think about this, but as the manhole was shutting, I suddenly realized, how am I going to open this again? <laughs> and I actually got stuck down there. <laughs> and I got, so I've got my whole back right now is totally bruised, because when I got there, I had to throw the thing open and just wedge my body in the manhole. So I'm, I'm actually in bad shape. I don't think I'll be exploring for about a week. <laughs> and do you not get scared? Like, it's quite dangerous. Um, I think the key, well, this is the thing, right, is that our... Our lives are on rails all the time. It's like, it's not very often that we really have to think about what we're doing very carefully. And when you're exploring, you have to think, if I go through this door and it shuts, is it gonna lock? You know, can I get out of this manhole if I go down it? What happens if I abseil down this air shaft? Is there gonna be an extractor fan at the bottom that's gonna chop me up? You know? <laughs> I mean, these, not to be melodramatic about it, but like, it's, there's something really rewarding about having to think about your actions, about having to think about what you're doing in that moment. And I think that um, that's one of the crossovers that we find with urban exploration and traditional exploration. That's part of the reason people do it, right? Mm -hmm. Is to sort of like be in your body and be in the moment. And the Thank little you. piece of advice that you gave me on the phone about distracting guard dogs. <laughs> yeah, so I was, in, uh, I was in Mexico about a month ago and we, we, uh, we snuck into a derelict skyscraper in Mexico and we, um, got about halfway up and a dog started barking and it sounded like the dog was at the top of the skyscraper, which didn't really make sense. It turns out that there was a dog up there, not on a leash, um, it was just, it was roaming free. And so I don't know what convinced us to do this, but we actually went back down to the car and we got some food and we fed the dog and it followed us around all night while we took our photos and, <laughs> and then left. <laughs> it does work. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your amazing job. Thank you. Bradley Garrett, everyone. Thank you.